Okay, you start it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another video here at Friendship Baptist Church. We're doing a What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video, and today we are doing another vlog, my friends. Not a vlog gaming, but a vlog. Yes, so blessed. If you like this video, please smash that like button. Yes. Listen to the gentleman. And hit that subscribe right button. Yeah. And let's get just got right. Ruined. You, you just ruined the video. No, oh, oh, we're not deleting this. Alright, guys, we're gonna play Uno. Alright, guys, we're gonna play Uno. Uno, por favor. I think that's Spanish. You should ask her. She knows Spanish. Okay, I okay. suck at Spanish. All right, everybody, we're gonna play Uno. She is. Por <laughs> We're gonna play Uno. <laughs> Say hi to the camera. No. Hi, camera. Yeah. Okay, let's get right into it. Hey, Mexican. Yeah. Mexican. We talking about Zero Style. Oh! <laughs> ah, see? Right, wait, 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 one of your boys. Two T roll, can you stand right there? My bad. Two T roll. 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 Two T no, like right there. Right there. Why? Okay, sorry. I don't even know where I'm aiming, John. Holly, look at the camera. I, I'm fucking. Calm down. I got it. I got it. Dude. You, Yeah, but I take some cringy ones. No, Alita, you just opened my memories. I told you not to. Give me a hand. Okay, wait, what's your password, Kylie? Kylie. Kylie, what's your password? 11 what? 11 999, never mind. It said it's not right. Go on Kyle's phone. No, what is it? Kyle, you want to be in there? Say something. Yeah, what is that? Yeah. 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 Help. No, my, I want my boy 
Connor. Your boy Connor. With what? Don't do it. 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 Don't I choose you green. I choose you. Yeah, I choose green. Oh, 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 no. Who's going for it? No, no, no. Can you have a seat on this? Kylie, do you have a seat on this? Oh, oh, oh. Are you okay? You're down the street. You sure? You don't look okay. Stop teaming up. Wait, That's what everyone says. Is it true? John has a blue zero. No, it's not. Uh, John has what a blue happened? Wait, he gets back oh, oh, oh. Is it about <laughs> like personal? Guys, 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 hide the cards, hide the cards, hide the money. Go, press the truck, go fish. Okay. John, 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 I got it on camera. You're welcome. It's right here. I'm after John. Manny doesn't know where his trapezius muscle is. No, he doesn't. You know what I find hilarious? Not one of these cards is a zero. <laughs> Stay on a shape, okay? Stay super smooth. Oh, <laughs> you're super smooth and you should pay her. <laughs> Chelsea. No. Wait, 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 pause it. Why? I got you. He wins. Whoa. I can't win, no He wins. I zoomed in. <laughs> Look at my cards. No. This is so OP. This is game. No, look this, at my is cards. game. This, this is game. This is game. Put this in your video. Uh, plug me on Instagram at kayan.kaya. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any social media, so yeah. Let's right. yeah. yeah. just zoom in on everyone's face. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's good. John, John, look at me. John, look at me. Wait, we're focused. Look we're at focused. me. Look at on me. Look. Che. Che. Smile. Somebody go. Smile. Oh, cute. Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. Watch this. And let us eat and be. What's the last word? Mary. Everyone, what's the last word? Mary. In other words, you folks can. We're going to get all this taken care of that we can now restore our relationship and finally we can be at peace one with another. Whether it be a friendship, whether it be a boyfriend and girlfriend, whether it be a daughter and a parent, a son and a parent, whether it be an adult and an adult, whether it be a husband and wife. After it all gets settled, then we just kind of get back to being normal or getting back to being, oh, Mary, just Mary, just Mary. What, what was this? That's not happiness. Uh, it's your birthday. What do you say? What's that first word? Happy, Happy what? Birthday. Birthday. Fourth of July, what do you say? Happy, Happy Fourth of July. Birthday. Even Thanksgiving, what do you say? Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. What do you say at Christmas? Mary. Oh, Christmas. a different word. See, happiness comes from happenings. Something from the outside comes in. Well, I can go to the amusement park and I didn't have it happening. I can go hiking, which is real. You say, yo, red. That's not from sunburn, from out of breath. From last week, I still can't get my breath. I'm not going to go anyway, all right? And uh, so that's it. A happening, amusement park, a gift. Oh, I'm happy, I'm happy. Something happened to you. Oh, when it comes to real joy, that merriment, that merry Christmas, the joy that comes from the inside. And
and goes out. That's what it's talking about. And the relationship was restored, and they were married. Look at verse 24. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. What's up, everybody? Welcome to day two. And today, we're going to start off the video. I'm going to turn the camera on a 90 degree angle. And my, my friend, right here. Shout out to Mountain Dew. We're sponsored by yeah, Pepsi. Yeah, take that mouse. Okay, this is weird. I gotta position the camera. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Okay, we're good. Okay. Hi, my name is Connor. You're watching Dude Perfect. I call this off the bat. No copyright. No copyright, by the way. It's supposed to make it in. Attempt number two. Wait, 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 get my hands, get oh, my hands. Oh, get, get your hands. Okay, let's go. Okay. Okay. I call this backboard reverse. Super Yeah. Slam dunk. What is this? Okay, try again. <laughs> We're gonna get this. First take. I call this off the backboard and double windmill. Just see that. Seniors only. Here we go. No one else. Cody, sit this one out, dude. Four more years, all right? Four more years. You're going to finish this. You can find this round, okay? Here we go. Three, two, one. Yes! Very good. And what song is it from? Oh.
enter the kingdom of heaven. If it's an honest and sincere question, scripturally and biblically, are you going to heaven? And you know that. Day three, which promises to be another fantastic day in John's vlogs. Okay. What's up, everybody? Take okay. it away, John. All right, everybody. Get right this is into it. My first it. person I'm interviewing. It's Ty. Hi. <laughs> and my first question is: Would you rather have pancakes or would you rather have waffles? Uh, French toast. No omelet. <laughs> An omelet. No. Hey, there you go. That's the okay. One. Um, what's your favorite thing about Passion for Paradise? You. <laughs> and by you, I mean all the people. Okay. Um. <laughs> Can you wink? Um, yes. Um, are you singing in choir tonight? Yeah, I am. You are? What are you singing? The song. What song? Um, it's only by the blood and focus. How would you rate Passion for Paradise out of ten stars? Um. One out of ten. Nine point five. I feel 5. like more people could be here. Yes. Than there. And really next are. year, guys, come right, right what? there, right. You're gonna promo. Promo. Yeah, you're gonna promo the church. Just this church? I'm gonna promo all the churches. Okay. Go to church. Okay. okay. You you wanna promo that um that beautiful that free thing that's gonna be next year too? What's the free thing? The bracelets and stuff. I didn't know there were free stuff. No, but dude, you were running it earlier. Oh, 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 yeah. Come get your um, your uh, bracelets for one dollar. All right. Oh. Oh, okay. Go John. Do you love Jesus? No. <laughs> no. I love Jesus. No, that's what I said. Well, that's what I said. Okay, I can see that. <laughs> okay. We're gonna be playing Fortnite with Connor on the Switch because he's an absolute beast. What? And then we're gonna ask Jojo a few questions. Alright, Jojo. If you had a boat, what would you name it? A boat? Yeah, a boat. I wave hello. Wave hello? What will finally break the internet? Hackers. Wreck it Ralph. Wreck it Ralph. Wreck it Ralph. <laughs> See you guys, we'll play Fortnite in a minute. Or hopefully. But anyways, and a few two more questions. What do you think of the passion for paradise? It's fantastic. And if you could rate rate it out of one out of ten, what would you rate it? One hundred out of ten. Good. Do you have any promo you wanna say about the church or the merch? Or the merch? Yeah, the merchandise. <coughs> outside. Like outside that window. Get pants. They're really dope. They're really cool. The merchandise here is rip off. I don't like it because it's not free. And what? Hey, what the out. heck? Oh, it's not free. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, wait, let me pause this. Everybody, turns out we kinda get Fortnite going, so we're yeah. playing Mario Kart. Yeah, play Mark Art guys. It's a good game by Switch. Of the King of. That was 
not the face I was going to ask. The king of Hebron. Oh, I know all of them. <laughs> what is it? What is it? No, it's, 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 it's um, Heron. That is not correct. The bonus, I say all five. Oh, you're so blessed. Oh, my goodness. No, I say. Hoham, that is correct. There was no CNN, there was no MSNBC, there was no Fox News, there was no internet, there was no Facebook Live, there was nothing. So people had to come and see it for themselves in the flesh. So all the people, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, this is the king, and he's telling his soldiers and his servants, all his civil workers, go, invite all of the population. I want them to come and see our showdown with Elijah. The Bible says in verse number where? 20, it was Gath, he gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Who are these prophets? Well, these prophets were, uh, these were the false gods. Ahab, through the influence of his evil wife, Jezebel, both of them decided, hey, we're just going to forget God, okay? We're going to hop all over Yahweh, okay? We're not, we're not going to worship the Lord God. We're going to tear down those altars. We're going to go and we're going to worship this God. His name is Baal. As a matter of fact, the Bible says here in verse number 19 that there were 450 prophets of Baal. But it's not that. A lot of times people, they, they read the story, they go, oh, yeah, 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 I'm going to that story. Yeah, yeah, 400, 450 prophets of Baal. There's more. There's actually twice, almost twice that number. The Bible says, the Bible says in verse number 19, the, and the prophets of Baal were 450. And the Bible says the prophets of the groves were 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. That's a total of 850 for those of you guys who are counting. That's 850 prophets. State funded. USIA approved by the government, paid for by your taxes, prophets of Baal. These are the bad guys, by the way. And we have one prophet. His name is Elijah. You know, we came to kind of come. We're going to see a massacre today. 850 versus one. That's not even fair. Okay? That's like that's like that's like wine I versus couple days. It's just not fair. It's just it's just you guys only a couple days, okay. Okay. And it's just not fair. Okay, and the wine I play okay now we can talk about who was right. You may who knows? You may be the only one in your in your in your entire class at school who is standing up for what is right, and sometimes you feel all alone. You feel like it's eight hundred and fifty to one. Yet God is on your side. The Bible says this in verse number 20. Elijah, excuse me, verse number 21. Hold on, Elijah, he's angry, right? Because all of the nation of Israel, these are supposed to be God's people. These are God's chosen people. They are, they are special. They are consecrated to God. God has done so much for them all throughout Israel's history. He has sacrificed for them. He has given them a promised land. He has taken them out of Egypt. He has protected them. He has coddled them. He has fed them. And, 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 and now they are not standing up for what is right. And Elijah's mad. The Bible says in verse number 21, Elijah came unto all the people, and he said, How long, how ye, between two opinions? If the Lord be God, in Elijah's mind, it's, it's easy. Follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. He said, guys, this is the choice is easy. Okay? If you if you believe that God, Jehovah, Yahweh, the God that the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, if you believe that that's true God, worship him. And if you believe Baal is the real God, then you worship him. It's not a hard choice, but oh man, it's really hard for us sometimes, right, to make a decision. You guys know, you teenagers. What am I gonna wear today? Red or blue? Okay. Um, maybe. <laughs> I'm gonna style my hair today, okay? Uh, 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 what shoes are we gonna wear? Okay, I have 50 pairs. Okay, we have a hard time making decisions. You guys walk out after church. Well, we're gonna go eat. Okay, McDonald's. No, no, I like Pizza Hut. No, no, I like Taco Bell. Let's just go 7-Eleven. No, 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 no. We have a hard time making decisions, and that's the nation of Israel. But nation of Israel, listen, this is not what you're gonna wear. This is not something as trivial as where you're gonna eat after church. This is life and death. This is the fate of your nation. This is the fate of your family. This is the fate of of you. The Bible says, Elijah, he says, how long do you halt between two opinions? What's the problem? Where are the other, where are the other Christians who will stand up for, for, for Jesus Christ? Where are the Christians who will stand up for God? It's not a hard choice. You've got Baal and you've got God. In Elijah's mind, the choice is not hard. You guys like movies? I like movies. Okay. 
about a year ago. This is actually this is, this is one of the reasons, and I, I know this was God, okay, because I was right in the middle. I was preaching a, a, a three-part series, okay. You ever been in a series, brother Rob, and, and, and God gives you an illustration, and bam, he just drops it out of heaven like that, okay? It happens. It happens to me all the time. Most of the time, I would say about half the time, it comes from my kids, okay? My kids are great illustrations. Why? Because they're goofy, okay? And they say what's on their mind, okay? And, 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 and God speaks. Okay, to me, okay, when I'm preparing my sermon. Last year, when I was going through a little three-part sermon series on, 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 on 1 Kings 18, check this out, we were sitting on the couch, okay? Now, in my opinion, you may disagree with me, okay, but you'll be wrong, okay? <laughs> um, but there, there, there is a hierarchy. I see a lot of, I see a lot of t-shirts right now. I see a lot, I just brought a man's phone right here, Captain America. He does, he, the superhero thing is huge, okay? Now, when I was growing up, okay, if you like comic books and Star Wars and you were into, uh, like, superheroes and stuff, you were Weirdo, nerd, geek, okay, you are excluded from culture. I'll play mainstream, so I'm, I'm, I love it, okay? I, I, have a, I have a definite ranking. Storm, do you have a favorite superhero? Uh, Iron Man? I know it's hard. 
You know, there's three things. As a matter of fact, there, uh, there's three. There's three things. And there's three reasons that I have for you tonight, real quick. Tonight, the last time we talked about stronger. Together. Yeah, tonight, I want you to think of two other words. I want you to think of the word and power. You need to know the word of God and you need to know the power of God. Can you say those two words with me together? Word and power. Power and word. You need to know the word of God. And you need to know the power of God. And there was a reason why the nation of Israel, they were wishy-washy between the, the two. There was, a, there was a reason that they could not make a decision between Baal and between God. They, they, they had a hard time making a decision because they did not know God's word and they did not know God's power. And I want you to see that there are four types of Christians. There are four types of Again. The Bible says, Elijah came unto all the people, and he said, How long halt ye between two opinions? I want you guys to see this. This is the typical teenage answer. Every Sunday, okay, my kids, they go into Sunday school, and you know, they're kind of, mm, they're still asleep. Okay, they never have, you know, I mean, it was a long weekend. Okay, this week it's to the beach, and they show up on Sunday. They show up on Monday at school, and I ask them, Oh, how was your weekend? What did you do? Elijah's asking them questions. I can see him yelling. I can see the veins popping out of his head. How long halt ye between Christian and Baal? How long halt ye between two, two opinions? The Bible says, and if Baal the follow him, and the people answered him, what does it say? Not a word. You see, there's four kinds of Christians who are in this building. Number one, there's the first kind of Christian, and that kind of Christian is the apathetic Christian. Do you know what it means to be apathetic? It's an interesting word. That's right, that sounds like pathetic. Yeah, it's exactly, okay? Apathetic. It means you, the, 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 Webster's, the Webster's definition is having or showing little or no feeling or emotion. Or, or, or emotion. I like the second definition. It says spiritless. That's what some of you guys are like when you roll into school Monday morning. That's what some of you are like when you roll into, uh, into church on Sunday morning. You have little or no emotion. You have no spirit. It happens in our church. It happens in our school. You roll in, you talk to them about it. Say, how was your week? And uh, no answer. There's, there's, there, there's a type of Christian, there's a type of Israelite who is apathetic. They don't know and they don't care. But there's another type. There's a second type of it. And that's the type that has a little bit of apprehension. You know what apprehension means? Anybody? It's a big word. Have you ever been apprehensive? A little fearful. First Kings chapter 18, verse 3. I understand, teenager, why you're a little bit fearful when it comes to the things of God. Because in our culture, in our time, in your class, in your youth group, maybe in your family, when you whenever you mention the name of God, bad things happen. I was just talking to a girl okay, this past week, and she said that, uh, that there was a girl that she had led uh, that she had led to the Lord. She had invited uh, one of her friends from public school to come to her church, and she said that my friend got saved, but oh man, you can't talk about God in, in our home. There are, there are teenagers in, in our church, okay, they can't talk about God. Every time that we knock on their door, every time that we try to, uh, to, to build a relationship with their parents, their parents don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the name of God. They don't want to have anything to do with God. And, and I know what it's like, teenagers, to be a little bit fearful to bring up the name of God because you get persecuted. You get you, you get shunned. You get made fun of. Oh, you're the Christian. You're the little goody two who lives down the block. You don't want to have anything to do with it. The Bible says in, in 1 Kings 18, there was even more reason to fear. The Bible tells us that Ahab and the evil queen Jezebel, they were putting the prophets of God to death. And so we, we, we could spend a lot of time talking about these guys. Okay, but these are the prophets of Baal. You guys know the story? Okay, you guys know the story, right? It's a, it's a face-off. It's the prophets of Baal and the groves, 850 versus Elijah all by himself. They propose a challenge. You're going to make our Bible trivia challenge, and it's not fair. <laughs> hey, you guys build an altar? I build an altar. And who's ever God answers? And you guys, you guys know the story? It's a cool story. If you've never heard the story, it's awesome. So the prophets of Baal say, yeah, our God is real. We're going to build an altar. We're going to put up, we're, we're going to slay an ox. We're going to, and we're going to see Baal. Baal's going to answer our prayers. And, and the rest of the story is hilarious. So okay, because Baal, the, the prophets of Baal, they start dancing around. Oh, but I don't know how Baal worshipers worship. I, I'm not a Baal worshiper. I know, I, I know when I'm in church and I'm like, I sing. Jesus loves me. What are they singing? Okay, as a Baal worshiper. Okay, 
Pharaoh knows me, this soul. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how they worship. Okay, but they're hopping around and they're worshiping and they're chanting and they're and, and all of a sudden they start to get desperate because Baal is not answering. You guys know, and I know, Baal is not real. Elijah gets into it. Okay, fine. It's Elijah. This guy. I tell you, this guy. The Bible says this in verse number 27. They came to pass at noon. They had been dancing all morning. They had been bowing down. They had been in the dust. And Baal was not helping. The Bible says, and Elijah mocked them. And he says, cry aloud, for he is a god. Elijah's, he's trolling them. Okay? He's making fun of them. He's like, you guys should probably sleep a little bit. Baal probably can't hear you. And his sky got this. He says, he says, either he is talking. Bro, listen, Baal, he's probably on the phone. Okay, just call him back. Okay, just, <laughs> right, just let someone pick you up. Okay, he's done. He's got a call waiting. Okay, just leave a message. He'll, he'll get back to you. Or he is pursuing. Okay, he, he's withdrawn into a private. He, he went on vacation. <laughs> Elijah, he's, he's making fun of the prophets of Baal. He's like, is your God on vacation? Did he go to the Bahamas? Because he ain't listening. He ain't picking up the phone. He didn't he next you back. The Bible says, or peradventure, he sleepeth and he must be awakened. Okay, Elijah, this whole time, he's sitting back and he's saying, Your God is not like my God. Oh, the prophets of Baal, they get so desperate, they start to take out knives and they start to, to start to cut themselves and they start to bleed. They do all kinds of desperate, wicked, unbelievable things to get their God to answer. By the way, boys and girls, this is not what your life is like sometimes. This third A is, it's not, it's not. It's not, it's not apathy, it's not apprehension, it's apostasy. Well, that's a big word. You know what apostate is? Apathetic. Don't know the word of God, don't care about his power. Apprehension, I can understand. I can understand you being fearful as a young Christian teenager because of, of, of being made fun of for your faith. I can understand that, I get that. You know God, you know God's word, you know what the Bible says, but oh man, you haven't taken that step of faith to trust in God's power. Do you know what an apostate is? Apostate, a person is a person who, who who ignores God's word and only cares about God's power. They want what God has. You know what God provides for you? He provides for you happiness. But there's a certain way that you can get that happiness, right? Obedience. But that doesn't make sense, right? As a as a kid, it doesn't make sense for you to obey and then you'll be happy. In our flesh, it says it makes sense for us to do what we want, and then I'll be happy. But no, God says obey your parents, obey your authority, do things the right way. All the people come near unto me, and all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Those are some of the greatest words in all of Scripture. Elijah, he goes over and he finds a he finds a stone. The Bible says in, 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 in 1 Kings 18 that he picked one stone for each of the tribes of Israel. And he started to rebuild God's altar. You know something I noticed about building altars? Take some sacrifice. Do you have a stone in your life? Do you have a part of yourself that you are not willing to give to God? You can't hold it back. What is that altar? What's that stone? Is it your relationship with your parents? Oh, you go to church, you go to Sunday school, you go to youth group, you memorize verses, you memorize for Bible trivia, you do all these things, but the one thing that you will not do is submit to your mom and dad. You can build that altar. Is it your music? Is it your entertainment? You need to build that altar. Christ. 
and you chose something else. God wants you to rebuild that altar. The Bible says, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones, verse number 31, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. Oh, by the way, Elijah, I love his name. Elijah, I love your name. You know what your name means? Elijah, I'll forgive you if you don't. This is not Bible trivia. Half a point. Prophet of God. Good answer. No. <laughs> Close though. You know what Elijah means? The Bible says that Elijah's name means El. It's a compound word. El Yah or El Yahu, the Almighty, self-existent one. Elijah was named after his God. You are named after your God. You carry the name of Christ through you. Rebuild your altar. And the Bible says, well, you probably know the story. Many of you probably heard sermons before on how uh, Elijah rebuilt the altar. And the Bible says, Elijah, he goes far and above and beyond. Okay, He says, okay, kill the fatted calf. I don't know about you guys, but if you ever slaughtered an animal, slaughtered animals, they don't burn too good. Okay, there's blood and there's guts and there's skin. It doesn't burn that great. He puts it on the altar. He puts it on there with wood. He pours water over the wood. I don't know about you guys, but wet stuff don't burn. Remember stuff that doesn't go together? Wet, dry, okay? Christian, bail. It doesn't go together. Wet, dry. No. Wet stuff doesn't burn. Water doesn't burn. He says, run out like that. He's like, run. Just did one emu. Just did one emu all around the altar, okay? We're going to make a trench. And inside of that trench, I want you to pour more water, okay? It's like a moat. It's like a castle of defense against any fire man can come up with. There's no way that this altar that Elijah, the prophet of God, has built, there's no way that this will burn. By the way, there's no way that you can do it yourself. You can't be a good enough Christian for You're going to have to let God okay, be apprehensive. And I understand, believe me, I understand what it means to be fearful in the face of persecution, in the face of overwhelming numbers. You may be an apostate. You may be somebody who has left the fold of God and you're living for yourself. You're living for Baal. You're living for your flesh. You're living for, for, for the world. But I want you to know this. God can do amazing things to somebody who is anointed by God. Can I tell you this, boys and girls? That word anointed, it's a very simple concept in the Bible. Remember King David? And King David was to be picked by Samuel as the next king. Came before all his brothers, and Samuel said, No, not him, not him, not him. Where's your youngest? Where's the scrawniest, runtiest, the smallest one? Boys and girls, it doesn't matter how tall or strong you are, it doesn't matter how smart you are. God can use anyone. You may not think of yourself as special. You may be a seventh grader who's new to your school, and you have weird clothes. And nobody likes you. But God does. God loves you. And he can use you. And David came. And Samuel looked at David. And God whispered in Samuel's ear, this is the one. There's something about him. Samuel took out a little horn, a, 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 a little horn and it had a stopper and it had, it had some oil. And he poured the oil on, 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 on David's head. And for us, that, that seems kind of weird, but it, it's kind of like a little bit of like a perfume. And, 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 and the fragrance would, would, would fill the room. And, 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 the, and the, the picture is that God, he is resting his power on this young man named David. God was resting his power on a man named Elijah. He was anointed as a prophet. He had authority from God. He had power from God. Boys and girls, can I tell you this? All of you are anointed. There's something called the Holy Spirit. God lives in you. That same power that sustained Moses and David, the same power that sustained Elijah here, it's anointed you. All right, guys, thank you for getting to the end of this video, which is like 40 to 30 minutes long. You got to the end of this. Thank you. Please hit that like button down below. Smash and that smack, like button. Subscribe button. Subscribe and, if you and want, comment below in the hit description. Hit the notification bell and we gotta go. So, okay. <laughs>